1997 Jeep Cherokee with a 4.0 engine. Symptoms are runs good cold, runs good at wide open throttle, it's got mid throttle hesitation problems, what the customer described as stuttering and backfiring, popping through the intake. Symptoms of a lean condition for sure. And what happened history was the rear O2 wires got somehow torn up and uh, the, the owner of the vehicle fixed the rear O2 and he continues to have this problem basically ever since. And what I wanted to show was the importance of understanding the need to check the O2 heater circuit when you have a problem such as this. And right away, starting with the scan data, I got both O2s pulled up and you can see the sensors are cold as indicated by the high voltage reading. Downstream O2 at 4.5 volts, upstream O2 at 4.98. This is typical Chrysler cold engine bias voltage they run to do heater circuit tests. So we use this to help us, help guide us into whether or not these heater circuits are working. So start the car. All right, so I started the car, and as you can see, I have about 400 frames of data already recorded, and uh, these O2 signals are still high voltage. You can see the upstream one coming down a little bit. Um, it's at 4.57 and dropping, and the downstream is at 4.67, pretty steady, not really changing. Further away, from the exhaust manifold, which is why. And what you're looking at would be a classic example of a heater circuit that's not working. Neither O2 sensor has a working heater circuit. If this heater was working, this five volt bias that's being sent to the sensor would already be down to a half a volt. Uh, it's been at least 30 seconds since startup. And you can see our voltage is still high. Uh, if I hold my RPMs up, you'll notice that those O2s will warm up faster. As the O2 warms up, it becomes less resistive, starts to pull that 5 volt bias down. As you can see, downstream hasn't changed at all. There's possibly a problem with that. Let off the gas, and what you're going to see is that sensor starts to cool back off immediately. What's going to happen when you take this car for a ride with a blown heater? fuse for the O2 is that bias voltage is going to stay high because the sensor isn't warming up enough and the computer interprets any number above 450 millivolts as a rich condition and it's going to take fuel away and what's going to happen mid throttle is your fuel trims are going to go way negative and uh, basically take all your fuel away. You punch it to the floor it's going to run great because the O2 is not used to wide open throttle. Runs good cold because again the O2 is not used but you got to look for this and um this is uh, one of the things that can, can give you an issue with an O2 is the heater circuit. Make sure you check it. So um, it does have a blown fuse. I'm going to take you under the hood. We're going to take a couple, couple quick looks. I'm going to let this cool down for a minute. And we'll redo this test with a good fuse. And I'll show you how much faster it warms up. And also we want to focus on this guy. I'm concerned that, that maybe he still has a problem with this downstream. That's not even moving at all. You would think that it warmed up a little bit with the exhaust. But... Maybe not, we'll find out when we put the new fuse in. And uh, I came back under the, inside the car because the car started acting up. I wanted to show you why. If you look at the long-term fuel trim, you got minus 33% or minus 30%. Short terms at negative two, three. And the point is, all this fuel is being taken away because look at my O2. My O2 is fixed at 0.7. Take a look at that. It's not fluctuating at all. It, it's finally starting to warm up a little bit, but look what the computer's doing in response to it. It is taking all the fuel away. This car is chugging right now. Not sure you can hear it on the camera. Try to go under hood let you hear it. The reason this car is chugging and running very poorly is that O2 is basically lying to the computer, telling the computer the mixture's rich, the computer's taking all the fuel away. The result 
or the cause of that is a cold oxygen sensor and a blown heater circuit fuse. Let's go listen to it. Not sure you can make that out. You definitely hear it chugging. I got my uh, little bed of nails adapter on the on the O2 heater wire just to show you we got no voltage. Take a look at my, my meter, got zero volts. Got the blown fuse right here in hand. And I'm gonna put a new one in. Goes in the power distribution box. Again, this blown fuse was caused by some previous repairs. As soon as I plug that in, notice I got voltage on my heater. And what we should find is right away, that O2 should be warming up. Notice on the scanner, we're down to 0.2 right away. And here's what's happening now. Starting to balance out. See the long term still a negative. Short term's now adding fuel. And the car's gonna start to stabilize itself. As Soon as these numbers get, get to be more even. All I did was plug a fuse in. What do you think is going to happen on this car driving down the road with a negative 30% fuel trim? It's going to fall on its face at mid throttle. Wow, she's running beautiful now. You see the O2 is fluctuating. I uh, adjusted my scales to uh, 0 to 5 volts, so you're not really going to see real good detail on that O2. You see the rich lean of the O2 now. Right here is where I plugged my fuse in, right there. You see it drop down, start to become active, and, and those fuel trim numbers look great now. And there's my downstream. I was concerned about that. Downstream looks good now. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna shut it off, let it cool down for a minute, and redo the five volt time to activity test, which is what it's called, where we watch that five volt bias and see it drop right away. Blown heater fuse to the O2. Don't overlook it. Don't forget to check it. Listen how, how smooth she's running now. I'll let you listen for a minute, see if we can pick it up. Night and day. All right, before I start the car and show you the after fix, I wanted to show you the time where the O2s were cooling off. And you can see over here where we were low voltage and it starts to climb and climb and climb. And we're about 4.98 volts on the upstream O2 and the downstream uh, where it, same thing, low voltage. And you see it climbing up, we're at 4.51. The cause of this increase in voltage is both O2s have cooled back off, the key is on, the engine's not running, and the computer is preparing for this startup heater circuit test, which uses the 5 volt bias to do that. So I'm gonna set this back up, I'm gonna start it, and we're gonna see how fast this warms up as compared to before. Okay, I just started it. Take a look at both your O2s. In particular, the upstream, that was our main concern. And you see over that same period of time, that 200 frame of collected data, man, that thing's dropped almost immediately it's it's been less than 30 seconds in startup and we're already down below that 450 millivolt line so is the downstream as well that would be a good time to activity test and that's really what the chrysler systems are using on this year to make sure that the o2 the o2 heater circuit's functional it's part of the obd2 mandate that the heater circuit has to be monitored and if you've ever looked at a diagram one of these systems the heater circuit for the O2 is not computer controlled at all. Computer does not control the power, computer does not control the ground. Yeah, it does through the ASD relay, but it's not a direct measurement. And the only way that they can know that the heater circuit's working is using that bias voltage and seeing how fast the sensor warms up and how fast it drops. So that's what you're looking at. That would be a good time to activity test 
one of the things you look for when you're looking at O2s, turn the key on, look at your bias voltage, start it up, and that bias voltage should drop very, very quickly. So we're good to go. Blown fuse to the heater circuit, which was caused by the original repair when the wires got wrapped into the drive shaft or whatever happened. They shorted out, blew the fuse. He fixed the wires, fixed the sensor, but never fixed the fuse. And he still had his drivability problem caused by the computer taking all the fuel away when that O2 signal was was high voltage from that bias line, fooling the computer into a rich condition, computer taking all the fuel away. And again, makes sense, runs good cold, O2 isn't used cold, runs good wide open throttle, O2 isn't used at wide open throttle. That's it, blown fuse for the heater circuit.